Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Mark Who 77. I'm your host, Mark Baumgarten. With me is Vicki Jakubowski and The 77 Publications' own editor-in-chief, Ben Cullis. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, everybody. Uh, we have a special show for you. But before we get there, everyone can see I regenerated, right? <laughs> Yeah, is that what we we're calling it? That's what we're calling it. We're calling it a regeneration. I, I got younger, a rejuvenation, as we have oh, woman said. okay. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Whatever makes you happy, honey. Yeah, it's called accidentally shaving your beard off accidentally. <laughs> um, so <laughs> today's show is a very special show. Uh, we are going, it is our Ian Gibson's Lifeboat special. Woohoo! Ooh. And, uh, why don't we get the show starting? We got the regeneration out of the way. Ben, why don't you introduce who's coming on to our special? I certainly will. So it's my partner in crime, Steve Bull, um, editor of the 77 Annual, creator of V with um, Aid Hughes, and the editor of this amazing new um, publication, which is going to be out in just a matter of a few weeks, wow. Ian Gibson's Lifeboat. And also with him is the 77 art editor, uh, Brendan Wright, and himself and um, Steve have been working nonstop for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks on this amazing project. And we're going to talk with them and have a look at some of the work itself. But before we go to our interview, let me just put out there, if you like what you're seeing, if you like Mark Who 77, if you want to he hear more and get updates when they're available... And if you want to join the 77 Publications' own uh, YouTube page, just click down here where the subscribe button is, and you'll be able to find out. I think, isn't there like a notification bell, too, that you hit to get notifications? Absolutely. I think, I think there right. is. And, and we want likes and all of that stuff. Oh, totally. Like us. I wish they had a love <laughs> like it does on uh, Facebook. But yeah, like. Anyway, let's bring out Steve and Brendan. Welcome, Steve and Brendan. Oh, good day. Hey. <laughs> so, welcome to the Ian Gibson's Lifeboat Special here on Mark Who Seventy Seven. Uh, we're going to be talking all about Ian Gibson's new graphic novel book series called Lifeboat. Uh, he wrote and did the art for it. It's really amazing. You guys got to get it. But before we start, I've always got my Hardest question out of the way. We have the hardest question we ask our guests um, that they will have to use their minds and really think about to answer. Everything after that is going to be easy, easy peasy, simples. But we're going to ask the question, and let's start with Steve. Steve, who is Steve Bull? Oh, God, that is the most difficult question. Um, I know it is. That's why I asked Most it. of the time, I have to ask my wife who I am, but um, <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. So I am a, I'm a million different things, to be fair, but one of them is a comic writer and an editor and one of the team to, that puts together the 77. And in this case, uh, has worked with Ian Gibson on this wonderful novel. All right. Brendan, same question, but with a different name. Who is Brendan <laughs> Who is Brendan Wright? Should well, ask let's the ask him. <laughs> let's ask his private brain care specialist. <laughs> well, Brendan, he's, he's just this guy, you know. Zephyr, this is guy, you know. Uh, that fits well, but that's the wrong show. We're seventy-seven, not forty-two. So oh, try, yes. try again. Okay. Try again. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Um. Yeah, I'm. I'm a a, a comic artist and uh, an illustrator, and uh, sometimes I'm a writer and uh, also a a very nice musician as well. And that'll probably cover it all. Okay. Now, on this show, because it's the Ian Gibson's Lifeboat special, I'm going to keep saying that that way, just so you get it into your head what we're doing. Steve, I have one more question to ask you. It's going to be a hard question. may not be as hard as the one who is Steve Bull, but who is Ian Gibson? Ian Gibson is a legend of British comics. Do I need to expand on that? Oh, totally. Totally. Let's go. Because we have some people who are watching this that may not know uh, about his great work. No worries. So legendary, uh, me and my peers would probably know him uh, growing up from 2000 AD. The likes of Judge Dredd, working with Alan Moore on Halo Jones, uh, Robo Hunter. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I mean, 
outside of that, he's worked for Marvel on Genghis Grimtoad. Um, the what has been on his Miracle Man, DC, yeah, on Miracle Man. DC worked on Green Lantern Quartz, uh, a number of other projects. Um, he's been around a stalwart of the industry and he's got a very, very unique style that I've never seen anybody ape, to be fair. Mm. Um, okay, then we've answered the who is section. That was the hardest part. So now we're going to go all easy. The rest of the show is easy. But <laughs> I do want to say, um, I know that Ian Gibson uh, has not been doing great. He's been having some health issues. Steve, can you give us an update? Yeah, so it would have been absolutely wonderful to get him on online today to talk through it. But unfortunately, this the scenario we're in at the moment is everything's quite day to day on what he's capable of doing. Um, I think he wouldn't mind me telling everybody as he's, he's announced it publicly via his uh, Facebook social media that um, he's very, very unwell. Um, he does have uh, cancer. Uh, it's a very long name. I'm not familiar with it. Um, but he's basically most of the conversations we have at the moment and most of the sketching he's doing, uh, he's doing while he's having blood transfusions and other therapies and, no. um, and things at the moment. So yeah, it's, it's, it's very sad yeah. it's very difficult to see. Um, he's doing as well as he can with it, uh, but he's really desperate to get this book into his hands and out to his fans as soon as possible. All right. Vicky, why don't you take the next question? Well, we've got the who. Now we should do the what. Yes. What is Ian Gibson's The Lifeboat? Which uh, We've got three of you who can help us answer that question. Who wants to jump in first? I'm going to give the <laughs> overview first of all. Okay. What it has been, it's been certainly a long process and a long time in the coming. Okay. Um, we, we, myself and Steve, first were aware of it. Um, from our perspective as um, publishers of the 77 when we were looking to um, get Ian involved in the first couple of issues of the 77 comic and he was very generous with his time and with some material that we were used as back page posters introducing um, Lifeboat so that's going back about four years now um, and I will tell you that Steve will be able to discuss from this point how he's been working on the relationship working with Ian so we get to the point that we are also probably worth expanding that there's a bit of a, a myth a mythology around this to be fair so we're talking about the last four years but it's always been a name that's been bandied around it's always been in different like major comic circles that this work exists some people have seen snippets in interviews etc but we're talking about possibly the best part of the last two decades um it's been as i say hinted at probably strongly more than hinted at as i see some people have seen images from it um it was basically a, a personal project of ian's to write and draw um and as such there's just magnificent detail in everything about it uh because it's not just turning in work for somebody else he's just spent he the, you know this is his legacy project um he's been working on it and he was very, very reluctant to relinquish it to just anybody. So I think we're very, very grateful that he chose us in the end. And it was, a, as Ben intimated there, it was a, it was basically a, a four-year project before he decided to approach us and say, look, let's do this. Um, I'd already been working. But I, yeah, I was a big fan of him. And I was in touch with him for you know the last maybe 13, 14 years. And as such, on social media, Facebook, I created um, uh, a page called The Imagination of Ian Gibson. And we showcased a lot of his, uh, his work that he's had over the years and he's managed to keep on his computers. And that's where he goes to interact with his fans. Uh, as Ben said, we tried to get him involved early on. We are going to serialize it early on um, with his agreement. And we published uh, a couple of posters in the first two issues. And then it kind of went a little bit sideways. Uh, and we moved on, waiting for it to be his decision. And this is where we are now. Okay. Wow. Brendan, you have anything to add on that? 
Oh well. <laughs> I, just, I thought that we already asked. I thought we already asked the hard question. This was supposed to be the easy question. Everything's the hard question. Supposed to be easy. Uh. But, but yeah, well, the the interesting thing, I, I suppose, I I was sort of leaving this for a later question, but um, uh, I laid out the book, and so the um, the hardest part of the book was the the second half, which is the how this is how Ian did the artwork section. And, I um, love that section, Ian, by the way. <laughs> thank you, um, Ian. Um, much to my dismay, is unfortunately very, very modest. And so when he was asked, the um, when Steve asked him the question, Ian said, oh, I just do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was all the material I had to work with. We were so trying to get this in-depth analysis of how you create the character, your inspirations, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, no, no, I just sketch things and sometimes they work. And it's like, okay. Yeah, that was it. That was it. So, so it's very um, organic for him. It, it it is or it isn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's right. It happens or it doesn't. And um, so ended up um, absolutely killing myself just before the the print deadline um, for the for the print proof, and um, had to do stacks and stacks of research. Found um, ancient interviews with him from the eighties, and and I had to look up uh, all sorts of like you know what sort of paint does he use and why why does he use this kind of paint and what are the properties of it and um it's it's a uh, for the just for the record it's it's called gouache and it's um it's been around for a long time and I've I've dabbled in it but never really taken to it myself so uh yeah so I had to make up a whole lot of information that he didn't give us and uh I think managed to fill it out quite well thanks to uh hundreds of sketches which he he provided us yeah well, we're about to go to the the, the final uh, print file in a week's time, and before that, we'll be submitting a proof. Me and Ben are going up to see Ian on Friday. Uh, that's this Friday, which is what is it? Fifteenth? Yeah, fifteenth yes. of September. How uh, nervous are you, Steve? Uh, well, we'll find out because. <laughs> uh, so, so my dealings with Ian previously. Uh, I'll, I'll tell a little anecdote actually that. Uh, from the beginnings of the 77. So obviously when I was looking at who the great artists that I, I am aware of and know and personally and could call on, we were looking for an art editor before we got Brendan involved. And I reached out to Ian and said, look, how does he be an art editor? He said, well, I have to look at some stuff. And so uh, we had some up and coming artists and one of them was really good. So I took the story they'd just done. I was like, oh, he's very proud of this story. I think it's laid out really well. Uh, I'm really happy with its inclusion in the book. It was probably one of the best strips in the first book and um, presented it to Ian. Okay, what do you think from an art editor point of view? And I couldn't even, basically the response was just criticism after criticism after criticism. And he knows point, what he likes and he knows what he doesn't. <laughs> at, at that point, I realized just what a perfectionist Ian is. Oh, and, no. And also that he could never be the art editor on seven. <laughs> <laughs> that collaborative, constructive criticism wasn't there. Basically, if I fed back that to the artist, the artist would have taken up plumbing. I think that's what <laughs> it is sometimes hard to be. Um, critical have that critical eye of other people it it can be very easy to deal with your own little world and you like your own little world and then someone else brings you something sometimes it's really hard for you not to go well i would have done this 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 this, this. and if someone does it differently it's like no oh, that doesn't work but in all fairness and as steve says we've met him and chatted to him numerous times his anecdotes about oh when he name drops and then the next sentence is and I told them exactly where they were going wrong <laughs> you're just like yeah we'll park that in this room what's what's said in this room stays in this room you know own a silence yeah. <laughs> what? What? So, yeah he's so great like the filter is off it comes out and yeah you you the thing with Ian you're not left wondering where you stand that, that's that's where you are right so um and if 
if he doesn't like somebody or their work, yeah, it's it's not difficult to get that information out. Um, <laughs> and I think one of the things is he's uh, you can see he's he's very critical critical of his old, old work as well. Like early on, um, starting out, oh, I was looking like this, I was trying to do this, etc. And you can see his process. One of the wonderful things about Ian, I think, is during his career, he works with such precision, so many process layers, and at such speed. It's just, it's quite unique, I think, amongst like most of the artists that I've spoken to. Um, and then what you can see, so when we were putting together this book, we didn't, unfortunately, we couldn't have all the examples of all the process layers and stuff, but it's basically, there's about six process layers to the page, each page. And if he's doing a strip for, you know, a sort of run of the middle strip, he was, he was knocking these things out really fast to the point where in 2000 AD editor, um, I think we've got stories from Steve McManus, who was the editor in the 80s, of if if something didn't get turned in, if he needed something in a hurry, if a, a cover needed to be pitched in 24 hours, he'd reach out to Ian and Ian would supply it. Like, they, it would always happen. So I think it's quite incredible. Mm. Um, it is amazing. Yeah, opinion time. Um, so... Ian has done some really great works. You know, we met, you mentioned Judge Dredd, uh, Robo Hunter, Sam Slade, and all the stuff he did. But I know that out there, for a lot of people, the most Im seminal, the, the work of uh, Ian was uh, Halo Jones with Alan Moore. Do you, and this is the opinion part, do you feel like this will now, Lifeboat will now be what everyone thinks of ian gibson take it away from i mean halo there's nothing to take away from but do you think this is more of a out of a incredible and thing that he's done that will get him known and remembered for the years i think what we've got it's, it's such a difficult question isn't it because halo jones is just great it's <laughs> I know. Wave, I... wave and then coupled with uh the reputation of alan moore yeah. um, and a lot of people point to halo jones as being like you know, one of the best works that Alan has ever created. Right. Uh, see, that was in conjunction with Ian. Yeah. Now, I think if you take that in silence, so what we've got here is we're basically, we're running, we're running 24 pages here, which is book one. Right. And if you revisit Halo in book one, it's quite a set up book. Yeah. And yeah. Again, what we've got here, there, there's action, there's characterizations, there's, but it is a setup for what's coming next. I don't want to spoil the book, uh, but that's what we are. We're in book one. Mm -hmm. I know it's going to lead you to another question uh, about book two, etc. But we're laying the foundations for what could be an epic. Okay, he's definitely spent a lot more time over this book. I mean, Halo had to be um, dashed out in time for print runs, whereas this had no had no publisher it was a private a personal uh, project um i i think from what i've seen i've only seen um a few online scans of genghis grimtoad um but i from what i've seen that was pretty hot stuff most um, comparable to this yeah yeah um but but this is this has certainly gotten um this is fully painted as do you actual, think that genghis grimtoad um what you now know brendan is mm. similar processing in terms of it being the gouache top top coat and stuff. I think so. I've only seen a few images, but it, it is the same yeah. sort of thing. It's it's yeah. it's what Ian does. Yeah, yeah. The format wasn't very friendly. I think you've got original of you, Steve. Some of the original Grim Toad stuff. Yeah, I've got one. I should have got it out for this actually. Is it it's American like... size or is it oversized, like the seventy-seven publications? It yeah, is. Uh, it's very no. It's not American size. It is oversized, like seventy-seven. Uh, and what you have in common with um, Lifeboat is the way the colours pop. So I think the processes are very, very similar. Um, it's very grand. It's very eye-catching. It's beautiful. Whereas Halo Jones, you know, we're going back to black and white. Mm -hmm. My opinion is it should never have been coloured. Colored, but, you know, they've, they've gone back. True. Rebellion has done that. Um, that comes with its own challenges, I'm sure, for the colourist. Um, but, yeah, this is, this is very similar in eye-popping um glory the great Genghis Grimto. It's interesting here here in New Zealand, um uh we grew up on in the 70s, we grew up on um even the American comics were reprinted in Australia in black and white. So even the American comics were black and white for us. Uh, oh. Everything was black and white. Yeah. 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 I mean I think 
what we can all agree with is that Ian's work, the lines are incredible. I've always loved his beautiful mm. flowing lines, thickness, variation and curve and stuff. His ink, his ink work. Um, and it's fascinating to look at this. And I've obviously, I've been very fortunate, um, so Steve, that we've handled the original artwork. And I see, Vicky, you've got a piece behind you, which yes. maybe we'll talk about shortly. But as, as you have the piece, Vicky, I'll ask you, do you find it fascinating yeah. that there's no actual line in the drawing? It's all painted. It's uh, not it inclines is... or, you know, it's... It, it, it blows my mind. I'm going to tell you that yeah. right now. Because when I got it, and um, so my, my son draws, not like this, but my son draws, <laughs> but it was just, it, it was something on a level that I, I'd never really seen. I have pieces mm. of, of art and, and I have pieces that I absolutely love, but I got this and it was just the colors and the way that they meld and the way that everything I, I just there there's yeah. a movement to it that is yeah is just so magical and it is so I mean like if I were to compare it to the comic books I grew up with in the 70s and the 80s here in America very different and mm. and I love it I love the color palette I I love everything about it and now I can't wait for the the publication to come <laughs> But mm. it was just, I, I was awestruck because I couldn't imagine that some human had mm. had created this from hand, to, you know, head to hand to to paper. And it, it's just this magnificent. I mean, you, mm. you see works of art and they're always awe, awe-inspiring. And I think that people... You know, too often comic books, you know, people go, oh, comic books. What they don't realize is that somebody is creating a piece of art that mm. then get transferred to the paper that they they sell in either mass quantities or limited edition. And it just, it just blew my mind. I, I'm still amazed by it every time I look at it. They want me to take it to work so I can show it to them. I'm afraid to transport it, actually. <laughs> I'm just like, it's too nice. I'm afraid to take it to work. I don't want people touching it. I'm going to put it behind glass. <laughs> um, I'm going to frame it before I take it to work. Because it is. To me, it's as good of a piece of fine art as any mm -hmm. classical artist. And I think that I just, yeah, here, yeah, I'm going to touch it. So, hmm. Uh, but, she touched it. She touched it. <laughs> no, yeah. I touched it. I touched it. It's worth it. Um, yeah, fingerprints on it. Yeah, it's comparable to 1970s record cover artwork. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Airbrush. Um, all of that. So yes. <laughs> but one one thing that we're not sometimes um be be aware that sometimes gouache isn't like fast, and I'm not sure. I'm sure Ian would have picked quality stuff, but it it was its aim in goal was publication and so it may may or may not be light fast so be careful where you hang it it's a good point and i can uh i can expand on that because ian did me a commission of halo jones with my daughter about what about 15 years ago and i loved it so much it's uh not behind the uh, museum glass <laughs> in my and it's faded quite considerably so yeah be very okay. careful with the colors on that yeah but um, we can we can yeah. be assured that this work itself I'll get is in it framed good properly condition. Then. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to discuss yeah. or at least bring out some of the points that. So the three of us, myself, Stephen, and, and Brenda, didn't work much together. I really watched in and whilst they were working, but part of the process mm. I was involved in was very much the physical scanning of the artwork. So I took it to a, a guy who's done a lot oh. of work for us before, and it was interesting, wasn't it, that you two had to go through quite a process to kind of decide what level we were going to pull out the detail and then you said brendan some points about when it comes back to a page again you have to make a decision about what you know what kind of uh dpis or element of scanning you're going to use i don't know if you want to elaborate a little bit on that because i felt it was quite you did agonize over that at the beginning of this whole process yeah it did quite a lot but the, the, the original artwork is painted at a2 size which is uh Oh, how many inches is that? You, actually, you measured it not long ago. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah it's, 50, it's 50 something centimeters by 
35 centimeters or something it's pretty big so it's 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 14 inches by 25 or something you know something like that so it's about the size of of uh four letter writing pages that kind of size um and it's being shrunk down to a quarter of that so it's being shrunk down to a single letter writing page size and so much detail gets lost and as a test we um printed the odd page you know on the home printer here and there and and you realize that the crispness and the sharpness that that you see in your original artwork it's just not there in the final printed copy yeah yeah and um i i actually don't think there's anything we can do about that unless we happen to do a kickstarter on um selling a larger folio large larger sized um pages yeah. we... i just wanted to expand on what ricky was saying earlier about you know the quality of each each page and i would i would even go as far as to say through throughout the 24 pages you could take any panel and it would make an art print on its own, like every single yeah. panel. Yeah, okay? yeah, I agree. I agree. That's what we're talking about here. Like, I'm looking at some on uh, my second screen at the moment, and just every single one of them would be beautiful. Now, what we realised then is for those that really appreciate their art um, and weren't able to buy or couldn't afford to buy a page of the artwork during the Kickstarter, you know, once they're gone, they're gone. Uh, we're we're considering, and we've done some mock-ups on um, a folder that's just slightly smaller than the actual original artwork. Um, but the idea is we would bind this uh, with rivets as almost like twenty-four separate prints mm. without without the lettering, a very high uh, quality scan. In fact, we've done them scans already, and we've worked hard. So it's a challenge. Brennan's in New Zealand, mm. and when we're talking about the colour of a, a uh, an original page here, and we're trying to compare it, you realise just how messed up you are with digitisation, because mm. Brendan will say, well, here's what I've got, and I'll be like, well, that's not quite the colour, it looks like this, and yeah. it won't come up. Yeah, anyway, it's, it's been quite a challenge, but we're in a position where we'd be able to publish uh, a bound uh, book riveted where with the idea that you could really appreciate every single page of artwork very similar or as close as we could get to the original page uh, obviously we've had the brush strokes being uh being able to fill um but you'd be able to rivet out this book slide any page out and frame it and put it back in the book frame another one if you, if you wanted two pages and that, a month and that was the thing in, in the original scans, you can see the brush strokes. Yeah, you can actually, yes. But they disappear when they're in the printed version. Yeah. Um, and so that was, and and the thing is, print is usually done at three hundred dots per inch. Yeah. Um, and so we've the scans work out at twice that, and we're not sure if the we we have to find out from the printer if if it's possible to actually get it printed at a higher um, density. Mm -hmm. Or if it's not possible at all. These are incredibly detailed uh, and, and incredible artwork. It's incredible artwork. That's all I can say. It, it's incredible. So I should have had this to hand earlier. So this is exactly what I was just describing. So just for size. Oh. Yeah, so this would be the item. We're actually going to go with, uh, if this gets it as far as through the Kickstarter, we'll go with a hardcover. This was the first thing that we came up with. It's riveted. You can see where there's no rivet in the top one here. Mm -hmm. You don't it up. It'd be accompanied by the book so you could read it so we wouldn't have to letter these pages. Oh, oh wow. Oh. Well, that's the image that we've got on my T-shirt right now. <laughs> and you can see, so what you'd be able to do is get in very close with any of these. That is... And they're oh. single-sided. Yeah. So they're white on the back. So they're, all, they're all prints. And that was the one, other yeah. thing that was interesting is by the time the artwork came to us, the pages were slightly yellowed. So in filtering that out too, we had to be careful not to affect the color of the paint. Um, yeah, that was so back, hopefully back to the we'll color. Let this starter running reasonably soon. We just got to find out there's an appetite from the collectors and artist appreciators uh, out there, which, you know, if we, if we can do it uh, and cover costs, we will do it. That's an excellent yeah. idea. Ian because also has, there's only two copies of really that book. can appreciate it, so. Two copies? It's All right, Vicky, let's fly, let's fly out and steal one. 
You know what? Ian has the other one. And oh, okay. I'm not going to steal from no. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to steal from him. I'm not stealing from Ian. No. Maybe some from of, you, Steve, not from friends. Ian. Yeah, we got it signed by some of his oldest friends, the likes of John Wagner, oh. Nick Khan, um, with just little dedications to him while he was going through his fight at the moment. We've got three sections to the book. We've got the story itself. We've got some excellent analysis of the processes itself. And you and Brendan have been putting that together, what seems to be for several weeks. And I've been lucky enough to be able to read through that. Um, do you feel that, you know, wannabe artists and stuff would literally be able to read some of this stuff and actually glean quite a lot of information which could be useful to them? A functioning comic artist at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Or people who want to, you know, people looking to improve their work or understand more about I think, it. I think any artist, any fan, um, could learn could certainly learn something even i think what what i've noticed with artists that i know is they're constantly looking at other people's work trying to work out how they did that or how they did that and mm. where it's possible they're asking each other questions all the time now it might be that they haven't had the opportunity and this actually shines a little light on some of the process um i, th I think certainly from the six levels of the process that he goes through to the fully painted page. I think a lot of other artists will look at that. Everybody's got a different process, right? Mm -hmm. But they can certainly learn something. And I'm sure if they introduced it to their work, it would improve their work. It's not quite as in-depth as, uh, say, Bob Ross. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> happy clouds, happy clouds. <laughs> no, it's happy dreams. Uh, happy clouds, too. <laughs> They're everything. Everything is happy with Bob. Everything. <laughs> I know you're going to put some uh, some stuff more professionally on later, but just in terms of some of the okay. process, you've got some. Uh, so this is some of the the original line rough. Uh, Ooh! Work. Oh wow! Yeah. Then we go on, and there's a, a process which is an underpainting process, which kind of sits. Hang on, let's see if I can get this in. That's hard to. See. Well, that is hard, oh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, is cool. yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, it's pretty interesting. I don't think I'm going to pick it up. But yeah, it's really interesting going from that. And then you've got in the book as well, we're going to feature some uh, original sketches and stuff when he was designing some of the ships and uh, Yeah, the, the ship work, because uh, Ian is really uh, good drawing uh, me mechanisms and ships and stuff. And, you know, that's actually one of the things I was going to talk about on, on that page in the errata in the back. I've always enjoyed uh, looking at uh, people's, uh, drawings and artwork of ships, of, of spaceships. Um, I used to, when I used to go through a weird phase of doodling, uh, I guess it's not that weird, but um, I yeah. used to draw ships and, and, and stuff. And I got to tell you, I, I if I had seen this artwork when I was drawing those ships, I probably would never have drawn ships because I can't do anything. <laughs> I can't do anything near what Ian can do. Oh, no, what you would have done, what you would have done is copied these pages. No, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. They would have yeah. changed the direction of your, uh, your, the way you invented chips. <laughs> I think there's something fascinating as well by what's not included in the storytelling process and what doesn't figure in the, in the strips. Mm. So for me, totally with Steve there with Judge Dredd, uh, but Robo Hunter, when it came out about Prog 76. Oh, God, yeah. So we're Sam talking Slade, yeah, the autumn, autumn 78. Yeah. Um, Verdis is a robot planet. Yeah. Gibson's robots are just the coolest, funkiest things in the world. And I fell in love with one. And I don't know if anyone knew which robot I fell in love with. Hoagie. Cutie. No. <laughs> no? no. Cutie. Okay. Oh. Cutie. Oh, was it speaking, was I was speaking with John Wagner just this morning. We're doing, uh, oh, we're getting Bogeyman out. And I said I was going to be talking about Ian Gibson's work, and I just momentarily had a blip. And I, I said, "Is it said a different way?" Because I thought it was Q T, as in the letter Q and T. He said, "No, no, it's C U T I E, Q T, but with a line between C U T I E." And um, I said, uh, "I said, I literally, as a twelve-year-old boy, I almost weeped when she blew up saving everybody." And he does that thing that he can put. And and, and Steve, I know that you love the dog, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Toby. I did fancy Toby. Halo, though. <laughs> yeah, I get the Halo thing, but in terms of robots, right? Yeah, robots. yeah. Exactly. But there are no robots. Am I wrong? Are there any robots in Lifeboat? I think he focused and wanted to spend time 
on humans. I think that's the difference. He wanted to really do a lot of work on in, humans. In the design work and the design stages, there are robots, uh, and you'll see them in one of the posters as well. Mm -hmm. So they are due to come in later on in the oh, story. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, you're right. In in book one, there's very little in the way of robots. There's some lovely ship designs. I think robots and ships, I think there's some what better way? I think the reason they sort of come alive is because he he does he gives them personality and they're slightly organic you know they're um even without um even without the words they're saying as robots you look at them and they're quirky humans right whether whatever shape they are they're still quirky humans yeah. and if it ships they have personality just like i don't know when he drew judge dread the the eagle on his shoulder had a personality you'll see in his, his artwork the eagle will be looking it will be pulling an expression he's very good with expressions uh one of the ships so one here's a little spoiler because well not even a spoiler this didn't actually fit feature there's a ship in um the dry car ship the aliens in the story mm -hmm. for lifeboat um we uncovered one of these uh sketches the other day so this is the ship I'm gonna mm -hmm. bring this here into this focus there yeah that one there yeah yeah then there's a little bit where it's going to capture something and if you look here, it's like a mouth. It kind of creates a mouth opening to capture the small. Oh, yeah. 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 It turns into a shark, doesn't it? When I saw exactly. that, exactly. I was thinking the James Bond movie at the opening was <laughs> capturing yeah. the satellite. I, I was That's where I was going with that picture. That I love, but he, I, that was great. Ian's As Ben just said, it's like a shark, right? It's, so yeah. the ship has just turned into an organic an animal and he's yeah. doing something that we would see in the big fishy. Yeah, <laughs> and we're gonna need to live a bigger lifeboat. Bigger lifeboat. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's it. I just killed it, haven't I? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, just so people know, uh, because um, we're gonna talk about where they can get this now because you know uh, the Kickstarter is over, which by the way. The Kickstarter, what, 531% of where you were going? Wow. That let's actually ask this question. I'm gonna I'll get back to what I was going to ask. What does the fact that you were able to bring so much in, what does that uh have to um say about Kickstarters in general? And I think I probably should go to Ben on this. Okay, it was my or well, the group's 18th Kickstarter. We got pretty good at doing them. We set a very realistic target. Steve and I went over it several times to make sure, you know, if you just come past it, you can still produce something. We always had a clear mind that it was going to be a benefit uh, for someone who we, you know, want to show our respect to and we care about. Um, what it says about Kickstarter is that um, I think good products will always, you know, get people's um, hard-earned money. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, it's harder than ever to... Um, do that there's we started the 77 when no one else was kickstarting at all back in the days of covid um we've built on it kept our you know fan base uh people keep interested in what we're doing steve's built the group the, the imagination of ian gibson um but you know i think really it's just uh it's, it's evident that the more work you put into it the, the more features you give people the opportunities people have for quality the artwork that, that, that Ian was prepared to um, work with us in in, in 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 using as pledges. And Steve, perhaps you want to discuss maybe the arrangement you came with Ian, you know, on on, on, on the split, if you're happy to talk about that stuff, as we represented Ian and his work in the Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah, I can certainly do that. What, what I would say about the Kickstarter as well is um, I think one of the things that has always challenged us as a 77 and uh, what what is in effect... Um, a fledgling comic, a fledgling publications business is getting the respect of people. That first purchase, that first bit of support through um, Kickstarter, we know if we can get that, they won't be upset with their product. Yeah, whatever lands on that, they'll be, it'll be the exact opposite of their fears. Yeah, it's going to be a really well published, wonderful, impressive item. They're going to enjoy reading it, but we have to get them. It's quite a challenge. So with a project like Gibson's Lifeboat, there's a huge history. Now we tap into our fan base. 
but also it goes beyond that. It gets shared by some of the greatest artists in the industry at the moment who are wanted to be artists because of people like Ian Gibson. And they then reach out and they'll support and then we'll get people coming from around. Much like we did with the Bogeyman project as well, where um, people will come from miles around because of the names involved. We don't have to not work as hard. Obviously, it's still going to be a great project. Um, it's still going to be a professional publication, but the name already comes with a huge an amount of respect, right? Yeah. I, I think that's what we, we discovered with these uh, particular Kickstarters. Um, and then what was your other question then? What was I going to explain? <laughs> um, well, in effect, we were, we were selling art on behalf of Ian. He was very sure. generous in okay. how, what we could do. So that, that was the other thing. So um, we took, I, I won't get into the detail, we took a smaller cut than we would usually do just to get this thing published. That wasn't um, any sort of push from Ian on that. It was a very amicable conversation. It had already been discussed by the point where Ian came to us and said, do you want to do Lifeboat? I think everybody on both sides would have done it for free. That's kind of where we were at. Yeah, it just We wanted to just make something that was beautiful for people to get in their hands and appreciate this work. Uh, what we did is we gave him a, a particularly good deal, but also he came with, he was very, very giving and as much as, okay, well, if we're going to, if we're going to have the best people involved around producing this, if we're going to give people the best pro product and, you know, turn as much cash as possible, um, he offered up the pages, for instance, so we put them out there. Um, I think every single one, whatever you paid for a page, you got an absolute bargain. I think, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it, it, you, you've, you've made this, the buy of a lifetime there. Like you really have, and there's 20, 24 of these in existence, so we're we're never getting another one. Um, and that's yeah, that's all I can really say on it. Is uh, as soon as we completed the project, we transmitted his share over to him, so that hopefully he could enjoy as much of that money as he could uh, while he could. Um, and we got on with starting to build this thing. So, yeah. which I'd like to shout out Brendan on that because he has done most of the heavy lifting on this. Uh, he's done. He's done a wonderful job. Brendan is just what a star Brendan is in the whole seventy-seven universe. Thank you very much. I'm looking at a page here that's got, you know, in uh, publishing files how everything's in layers and you can turn layers on and layers off. When I rendered up this um, this PDF, which has gone off to the printer for the proof, there's a there's a a, a page in here that's got an extra picture sitting on top of the bit that's not supposed to be there. <laughs> It keeps bugging me. <laughs> That'll be gone before the print. Before the yeah, print what do they say? What are they saying? Or I coined the phrase. How do you do? How do you do proofreading? You get all your friends to read it. You read it nine times. Yeah. Then you all agree it's fine. Then you send it to the printers, and, and then you find them. Yeah. 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 That's how right. thing. <laughs> the moment it comes back, you spot it almost instantly. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. How? And it's how glaring you... and it's in bright red and you're like, yeah. how did I ever miss this? <laughs> it's so right. Yeah. So true. Um, so it's... the question I was originally getting to, which has nothing to do with what we just got to. Oh, just, oh, just to no. butt in too. It, well, okay. oh, sorry, this is so rude. Okay. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Um, it's, it, it's interesting because now we're all in our 50s. Like I was an, a very avid comic book reader when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. But somewhere in my early 30s, I I got ah oh, what's the word dis dis um uh, what is it when disillusioned yeah and and I stopped drawing comics mm. and I gave up drawing and and uh, I stopped reading comics and so we're coming back to this now and I sort of I'd read comics occasionally but I I sort of have to force myself to do it and usually I read everything on a Kindle these days and comics are no good on a Kindle <laughs> um and so actually proofreading is it's it's quite an effort because you have to you have to go oh right I have to switch back into comic reading mode again <laughs> which yeah um and so it's easier to leave it to the other fellas to do and of course they're they're hoping that other fellas do the same yeah <laughs> that's a really weird thing that you just said actually that the comic book thing so mm -hmm. we'll proofread even when we're producing a uh an issue of the 77 we would have read that i don't know about you guys but i'd have read that comic from cover to cover about 10 times 
Yeah. And I couldn't tell you what any of the story is about until the actual physical copy has reached me and I read it <laughs> as a fan. Yeah. If all you're doing is trying to look at, oh, you know, uh, have we missed something you're, grammatical? You're, you've Haven't got we... the blinders on and you're looking yeah. at it is, with is that, that hat on and you can't see it for the beauty and the joy and everything else that comic books bring you because you're looking at it from almost a, a work perspective as opposed oh. to a fan perspective. Yes. Yeah, is that is that bubble in the right place? Is that color right yes. there? Title the, the right size? Did everything it, shift it, over yeah. incorrectly? Um, it happens. Um, mm. It's very easy to miss. Uh, we call it, you know, the the forest for the trees. You're so busy yeah. looking at all the pieces. And um, I remember years ago when I was working on a thesis, and they said, "Well, to check your spelling." read your read your thesis backwards so you can read each word and make sure the word is spelled correctly but well, you're certainly not getting anything that way and <laughs> and it would drive me nuts because trying to proofread and look at things and then you're like but did it flow did it make sense is anything about this any good <laughs> and it's like please someone else read this and tell me if it's okay um i still do that today i make other people proofread my stuff because and it doesn't matter yeah yeah and, and it's interesting too as a as a comic artist um you really appreciate the the fellas the the old school guys they're so they were so proficient Whereas um, a lot of the people I've been talking to lately who have had a second chance, like we're, we're, we're old now <laughs> and um, haven't been given a second chance, but we've always been fans rather than professionals. Like I'm an illustrator, but it's quite different from doing a comic book. And by the, like I'm, I'm still trudging my way through a six page strip, which probably now won't be published till late next year. Um, but it, takes so long to get there that you've you've lost all sight of as you said is this any good yeah. well if and, you're looking um, for proof uh brendan if your work's any mm. good we have it from the man's mouth himself he rates your work by the way Ian gives oh them very nice work. oh that's sweet it's very <laughs> sweet very nice I mean, there was a you know there's a few critiques after that of course <laughs> <laughs> that, that'd all be very true that all be very true. <laughs> uh, Mark, you also asked where the book can be bought. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think I think we've agreed that this is um, these books are being printed from the proceeds of the Kickstarter. It's the first print that would say very clearly in the uh, imprint. Um, we've got a trade paperback available, and that's going to be through the seventy seven comic dot net. And more importantly, when you come and see us on the road. Um, and we're going to see how what the reaction is and what the taste for it is. And we'll take it from there. And Steve and I are going to have discussions long into the night about what we do with this amazing book as we, you know, come to probably sell out pretty quickly and what we're going to do next. So, you know. One important thing to put out as well is when we launched the Kickstarter, we I think we launched it, it did change a couple of times. I think we launched it as a 32 page book. I think it was 32 pages and then what we decided once we hit the targets and went beyond is the and again this come out of the 77 car is we've got all this lovely stuff and fans as fans there's 24 pages of story mm -hmm. but there's an opportunity to give people all this extra stuff that is just beautiful to look through whether it's the process whether it is the character designs whether it is uh we didn't even mention at the end we've got uh so at the beginning we've got a forward from john wagner who's worked with ian on so many things um and then we've got at the end we've got the likes of uh steve parkhouse uh david roach uh steve mcmanus all writing almost memories of ian uh, things that come to mind, like some some witticisms from back in the day, etc. There's just we couldn't cut all this stuff out. It was like we could have left it on the uh, cutting room floor, but we're like, let's let's bump up the page count, and I think we've ended up at 56 pages now. So from the original 32 uh, that people were um, pledging on, they're getting 56 pages for the same money. We're sending it out. We're essentially, we're getting the director's cut from yes. the beginning. The first absolutely. Piece. Yeah. Oh. 
if we were a bit more clever as a as a company, we would sell the uh, thirty two pages and then go out with the director's cut. Oh yeah, we, yeah, uh, that's the way. The, the oh, you saying. missed yeah. that opportunity. You, you already it. said you missed <laughs> it. We, we're giving it to all of you. Like that's it. You're getting it. You're gonna enjoy <laughs> that's it. Just, I got, mean, that's awesome. Yeah, to get all of that good stuff with it. Absolutely. Also wanted the book to breathe. So what happened at the beginning is started to put in some, so to read, so that the pages would read correctly and we weren't packing it in. Um, there's some, there's almost like some dividing pages and stuff that um, they're nice on their own, but we didn't want people to think that, you know, oh, is this some part of my 32 pages? We just wanted to lay it out so that actually you can have a really nice, relaxing ramble for the book. Um, mm -hmm. And that's kind of where we've ended up and we decided to keep with it rather than cutting anything. So, yeah. yeah, I'm even um, more excited. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, for people who you know are going to buy this or have already got it on the Kickstarter, but especially for the people who you know were trying to get to buy them, and yes, Ian Gibson, really, that you just hearing that name, you should run out and buy it. But yeah. can you tell everyone and without spoilers, because we hate spoilers on Marku, but without spoilers, can you tell us a little about what this uh, epic story is about? I feel like I've done a lot of talking. Anybody else want to go, or I can get? <laughs> oh, but you know the story intimately. I can, I can read. Yeah, I can read yeah, Ian's yeah. introduction out, but it's, oh, it's, yeah. Ian's introduction. Yeah, we published Ian's introduction uh, there as well, and it basically is uh, it's a space opera, but with the idea: what if Romeo and Juliet had a baby? Um, and then what we're going to see in book book one is we're going to introduce war infections uh, esque to the Romeo and Juliet story. Uh, we're going to see aliens, uh, aggressive aliens coming in. We're going to see um, some, oh, let me see, uh, how can I put it? Um, some themes that are very adults. Um, we're going to see, yeah, the threat. We're going to see, uh, what are we going to see? We're going to see calamity. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's all there. It's all there. I don't yeah. want to give away the story, no. but it, it jumps a little bit timeline wise um, to help set up the story. As I say, book one is a setup, and that will probably get us onto questions about book two very shortly if we've got time. Yeah, Brendan, and, and the main can can we give away can we give away um like the main character this um beautiful sort of Halo Jones esque mm -hmm. I was point that lady. Out. Yeah, she she's mm -hmm. um she's the result of the union of two families. Uh, and they're trying to keep it quiet. So she's been hidden away all of her all of her childhood and young adult life, and they're trying to track her down and get rid of her because she's an embarrassment. Um, and that that's all written in the in Ian's introduction, so it's not too much of a giveaway. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um. So so that's that's that. So she's probably someone very important. Um. But she's coming from somewhere of being someone who's very not important uh, and um that's probably enough of a giveaway um, good thing to do, brendan i like that tantalizing <laughs> yeah. yeah and we all know what it's like to be someone who's not very important and we'd yeah. like to be someone who's important uh, do we i don't think oh. so I, i'm very important <laughs> i'm the most important person on marku 42 and 77 <laughs> I'm yes you are I'm, my name's on the brand. My name's on the brand. I'm important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got me there. I, I, totally, I totally get what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> isn't everybody like Mark who? <laughs> and thank you all for coming out to our go. show. We'll talk to you next time. Here. Yeah, no, no. A Mark Excellent. 77. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to field the next question? <laughs> oh, now we should go into book two. What is oh, book two? Yeah. Will we get book two? Well, we have we have we have exciting news. Um, whether or not we can share it. I mean, I would say, I would say book two will happen. That's how I that's Yay. how book two uh, uh, yes. I would hope I book two would happen. Yeah. So there's there's a lot to be done. Um book two is written. So it's so a lot of it. One of the very important things were so the book was presented to us as lifeboat. Mm -hmm. Love the shirt. We, we were really, really keen to make sure it was presented as Ian Gibson's lifeboat. 
Yeah. Uh, rather than just a generic strip called Lifeboat that we Ian Gibson happened to be writing and drawing. Um, that was part of the legacy to this. Book two is written, and book three is laid out. Oh, wow. Um, oh. So me, Brendan, and Ben know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of in terms of the art, obviously because of um, Ian's health and where we are, yeah, uh, yeah. there's a very small number of pages of book two in various stages of uh, process, um, and it would be lovely to think that Ian could continue and complete book two. Um, I think that's where we'll have to leave that at the moment. Right. Yeah. Ian is unable unable to complete book two from an art point of view. It will always be Ian Gibson's lifeboat. Mm -hmm. It will always be based on his script. It'll always be his script. It'll always be book two, et cetera. Right. And we hope that we could progress the project in some way or form with his blessing. So that's probably the way to encapsulate that. Yeah. For the moment. that I mean, I think so you need awesome. to, you've alluded to this, Steve, but I think you need to, we should make it clear that part of the process of creating the book one was that Ian opened his archive to us, didn't he? And oh. we pretty much got, as Steve said, all the development work, wow. scripts, wow. You know, so many different bits that are coming through is synopsis for book two and three. There's there's a wealth of stuff there. Um, I think I think where we where we're at is realistically we'll be just so happy when I mean he's already got the big large version, as Steve said, the nice art edition, but he already had the art pages, so we want to move that on. So on Friday, he we're driving down. We're going to see him. We're going to present him with the print copy. He needs to. He want. He wants to. He wants to sign it off, and he wants to be able to say, "You have my approval at this point." And we respect. We respect him for that. And I think our backers and the Kickstarter have been been patient as they need to be. I need to understand mm -hmm. that you know, um, the seventy seven publications always wants to make sure what we do is of, of good quality. We just have to be mindful and respectful that. Ian's been receiving treatment and we, you know, we need to do things at the right time when we can and when he's able to, to get involved. One of the things I've discovered about the 77, and I've said this before, is you guys have a very high quality product. This is not the mass produced. And hey, I love Marvel. I love DC. I love all of these things that you can get everywhere. But the 77 is this beautiful, special something that um, is well thought out, well produced, well drawn, well, great stories. Everything about it is really good. And then now we've got Ian Gibson's lifeboat. This is, I'm just going to say it, and it might be a little corny, but this is this man's soul. He's been working on it for two decades. And, you know, Anyone who's seen anyone who is creative, who has written a story or worked on a movie or worked on an artistic project in any way and has been working on it for years, it, it just they're putting their whole soul into it. This is not this is not your run of the mill. I've slapped something together and now I've put it out in my nice, cute little forgive me, self-publishing on Amazon. It, it just this is something that is a very high quality. And so it takes time and it takes effort and it takes money. So it's just, there's nothing wrong with everything else, but this is just a little bit higher. And Ian Gibson's lifeboat is even a little bit higher than even the normal 77 publication. So I think it's very important for people to realize that you are getting this, you're getting a piece of a man's soul. So we can all wait a few more weeks for yeah. it to come in the mail. Yeah. That's just my opinion. So no, very well put. Very well put. Yeah. And I think we all look at this from uh, as much as you know, we we run a business here, we look at it as that. It's all everything we ever do is passion. Mm. Yeah. And this falls into that. You know, when Ian approached us, it was the intention that maybe we could serialize it in the 77. But we knew, although that would sell shift copies of the 77. This should be a standalone, yeah, beautiful, yeah. beautiful object yeah. that people can really, really, really love and put on their shelf at home. You know, it needs to be it needs to be on the shelf behind people on their Zoom, right? 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and it's Absolutely. interesting that most of the people who uh, submit writing and artwork to the 77, most of us have day jobs. And yeah. So we spend lots and lots of evenings producing something we love. And that's, you know, the Latin root of amateur is amo, which means t to love. And so an amateur work is done for the love of it. Um, a professional work is done for the money and has deadlines and very tight deadlines. We have yeah. deadlines, but uh, ours are quite loose, long, long running deadlines to allow people to fit their evenings into doing artwork, which is a is quite a sacrifice. Just um, to and since put I'm, that one in, Brendan, when I deal yeah. when I work with you, I don't know what time it is for you, but generally it's between eleven p.m. and one a.m. and six yeah. a.m. and eight a.m. for me. That's the hours yes. I work with Brendan. Yeah, <laughs> it is, and and it's it's interesting because. New Zealand's daylight savings time and British's, uh, England's British standard time, um, they coincide much more nicely in British winter time uh, rather than the British summer time. So during British summer time, New Zealand is 13 hours ahead of uh, England, uh, Great Britain, which means that uh, instead of being 12 hours apart, um, and having 8, 8 p.m. being our 8 a.m., um, my 8 a.m. is Britain's 9 p.m. So um, for Stephen and Ben, their, their evenings get late very quickly. Whereas during their winter time and our summer time, we have daylight savings and they don't. We're actually only 11 hours ahead. So uh, we, we've got a whole extra hour or two to spend spend together two extra hours than we do during <laughs> the other season. <laughs> and I'd also like to add here that um, we, we were very lucky getting uh, into Ian's archives and we, we had access to um, the underpainting uh, um, of many of the pages, which is, um, which will be, ex uh, it's explained in the book what, what underpainting is. Um, and we've got six pages of, of um, underpainted artwork from book two. And in uh, Messenger, when we're discussing things, it turns out that underpaint uh, autocorrects to underpants. Yes. Which is. <laughs> so we see we see Denny in her underpants. Yeah. <laughs> uh, autocorrect strikes again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about the amount of uh, poor corrections I get from my phone when I'm sending you messages. <laughs> Not the side tracks, not the side tracks that run from <laughs> discussions about underpants. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, it's it, it's the computer's fault. It sent us off on these on these wild goose chases. So, <laughs> <laughs> why don't we uh, move to? We're, we're getting close to the end, but we do want to dive into more of the uh, artwork and pages that are in this. Vicky, what is your favorite page out of this? We'll put it on the screen, but go ahead. What's your favorite page in this and why? The page I have. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, done. Okay, your second. Well, then for you, your second page. Second most. Yeah, yours is obvious. It's right behind you. I mean, you know? come on. Yeah, is that asking her which is her favorite husband? You know? Well, that's an important <laughs> question to some people. Some people, that's an important question. They may yeah, be watching. Those here. people may be watching our show, wondering that. So, don't don't kick off part of our oh, audience. Oh, oh! Don't <laughs> ask me to pick a favorite page. What kind of evil question is that? Yeah. Okay, don't pick your favorite. Pick mean? something that. All right, don't um, pick your favorites. Pick one that you think the the viewers will like and will help them decide. Hey, I want to buy this, even though they probably already have. Um. Oh my God! You're putting me on the spot like this. Yeah, let me we'll ask come me back the question. to you. We'll come back to you. <laughs> we'll come back. All right, Vicky, you win. You got. You go with the one behind you, Ben. I'm going with the one behind me. There you go, Ben. Yeah. yeah. Well, I I think because it it shows my respect to the two guys below me here, mm. in and and way above me in terms of creating this amazing book, the cover for the uh pa the trade um paperback, um. Mm. Without spending hours on it, I just want to say that these guys pretty much produced a book cover, and it's an astonishing book cover. 
and it's so emotive and it says so much and it does exactly what a book cover should do, which is to go, I want this book and I'm going to buy it because I need to know what's going on. Um, so you'll be showing that and it just shows the threat. Scale size, huge, nasty alien beastie, little child, <laughs> Ian's amazing artwork. And it's just, great, and it kind of without, Am I right in saying that it was just for you guys? It was a tryout. It was just a kind of let's just. You know, yeah. Do you know what the process we work with? Uh, it's quite organic, isn't it, Brendan? So we'll throw yeah. some ideas out. Brendan will come back with some graphics and then we start from there. And then we go off in different directions. Usually I'm saying, well, can we try this, this and that? And then Brendan will come yeah. back. It might be the next morning. I'll pick it up. Now we tried. We came up with the format for the hardcover. Um, Pretty quickly, I think, didn't we? Uh, there was yeah, a, some yeah, challenges did. around the other characters and putting it on there because it's a composite of the covers were never created, so we had to create them. From it's a the movie office. poster. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. It's a movie poster. Yeah. Now, when we get, we wanted something very different for the soft cover, um, and we went, we was going in a completely direction, different direction for a long time, and then we tried something, didn't we? Which was what was we trying? We got the that that. Blue, uh, I think we were trying the episode dividers or something like that on the actual strips, and then yeah. pulled out. Well, hang on, let's have a look at this one. And when it landed, it was like, we weren't expecting it, and it's just like this this has got something. And then we just wanted to use the coloring to really sort of define it. Uh, and yeah, hopefully, you're looking at it now, and Mark's been getting a bunch of that time, and it just it just. Every time I looked at it afterwards, I'm like, yeah, that's the cover. And I love it more than almost everything else in the book as well. Yeah. Hmm. And and the original, of course, the the, <clears throat> the panel we took it from was painted in full color. And um, we, we turned it into a, a sort of a two color lithograph kind of thing. Um, so we put filters on it to pick out certain features of the of the picture and um, yeah, and made it into turned it and into again. monochrome. It comes with Ian's blessing. He's seen it. He absolutely rates it. I was there with Steve the very first time. In fact, Steve had his tablet to take down to show him the first cover. I was worried. <laughs> Mate, we stopped off at some service station just to get a bite to eat or something. And you were going through it. And I could tell, I just said, you know, this good. Of course I'm going to meet Ian Gibson and show him this cover of this book. <laughs> just... So I already knew that the hard cover, the one that's behind Ben at the moment with Dinny there and the, uh, you know, the film host type right thing. He'd already seen it and really liked what, what we'd done. So I'm like, and because the soft cover is so very different, I thought, I don't think this is a good idea, but we'll surprise him in the flesh. And then I'll see his reaction, his facial reaction. And again, because of the conversations I said earlier about how I've, I've heard him take things apart and when I showed it, and I was very relieved that, you know, he bought into what, what we were trying to do as well. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was that was a nice moment. Let me go to my artwork. Um, the second page of chapter two um, with the war room, that is so detailed. I mean, every, it just every little um, ship that's in the background, every little piece of uh, monitors and, and the, it just, it's so intricate. It's so beautiful. And the conversation between, uh, Shay, is it Chaitan or Shaitan? How How would I pronounce the guy's name? The character's name. Well, well are you Jay Greek or American? <laughs> let's go. Let's go Hebrew. Chaitin. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the scene between Chaitin and Primo and Barry. I'm. I mean, God, the whole book is just a great story. It's funny. I'm going to tell you something. When I was reading it, I could not. I'm reading it. And I'm on the second chapter. I'm like, huh? How are they going to finish this story? I mean. You've got build up. What they're going to end it all in chapter three? Because stupid me, I didn't. Uh, first of all, I didn't remember. You guys probably told me, but then I didn't see the words book two, book one on the inside cover. So mm. I don't know this until I get to like I think the first page of the the text errata stuff, and it says, "Oh yeah, book two is almost done, and book three. And I'm like, "Oh," and then of course the final panel of uh, chapter three, yeah. It better go on. I'm not leaving it there. Yeah. And I'm not going to say what it is, guys. I'm not going to spoil no it for spoilers. you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to spoil it, but wow, you you got to read the rest uh, when mm -hmm. it comes out from that panel. 
Um, and then when yeah. you talk about the, the errata itself, I like the process picture showing uh, Donnie herself and the way that uh, her character, the artwork was created. I, I just, I, I got to go back and, and reread a lot of my old uh, Ian Gibson stuff from 2000 AD because I'm, I got to see more and I've seen it before, mm -hmm. but I got to see it again. It's great stuff. So again, on that on that point, you can go. So on the Imagination of Ian Gibson uh, Facebook group, go in there and uh, I think Facebook, you can, you can search. If you bit search process, you'll get a lot of stuff that I would have published a lot of stuff from Ian with whether it was Halo Jones process pictures, sketches for Judge Anderson, etc. And Dinny herself. So, yeah, get involved there. Mm. Uh, ben, once again, where can they uh, get this when it comes out completely? Comic.net. Yeah. It's an online store. Um, we, we're, we're touring extensively with it through the UK. We're going to be at um, Lakes International Comic Art Festival. Um, Steve and I are going to be there in a couple of weeks' time. Mm -hmm. End of September, yeah. up at uh, up at uh, Bowness on Windermere. Then I'm doing the Bristol Comic Con, the 7th, the Expo on the 7th of October. Then we're doing Thought Bubble, which is one of the most highly regarded um, shows, mid-November. But yeah, it's 77comic.net. And um, we will have a digital uh, release as well. Do do we have prices on that? Do we have uh, how much they're going to cost yet on the site? To be confirmed. To be confirmed. Okay. Jeez. Then we'll we'll leave that open. They can, you know, we'll, maybe we'll put it on the text box when you have the right. Oh, when we'll you have, have it the by the time you, you put Oh, you'll have it? Okay. <laughs> so, folks, if you want to know uh, how much it costs, don't read my lips. Get <laughs> it there. Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, Vicky, you have any questions? Since you don't have to give another favorite picture, why don't you ask the next question? Unless Steve and Brenton uh, have a favorite picture they want to talk about. I've got one little one. Okay. <laughs> The um the very first page of artwork, um, th there are certain panels that he lavished even more love on, um, and so they on on the very first page, there's the picture of Denny's face, um, it's the third panel in on the first mm -hmm. page, and it's the page that made it to the hardback cover as a as as the central feature. Right. And it's so incredibly, the face is incredibly detailed with, with shadows and light. And it's, it's really, really, really beautifully done. Um, so that's, that's what I, the whole page is great, but that particular panel is, for me, that's the, possibly the most detailed panel in the book. Right. And I love detail. Yeah. You're, you're going to pick that out. And also expression. <laughs> like, the expression is, is, and you'll see that, and that is a theme of Ian's work. Is you know, you can zoom in, you can zoom into crowd scenes, and you'll see expressions on the people yeah. in the crowd. Scenes, you know, that's that's the level of detail that you get. Um, I'll take that on as well because mine is a panel. Like, there's so many things I love about this book, and pages that jumped out at me to start with. The ones that the one that lives with me, the biggest, the panel that lives with me is actually the uh, is the banner on the imagination of Ian Gibson group at the moment. And it is Dilly's son, Odie, face to face with uh, the dry car alien. The alien's got him in his claws and he's holding a toy gun at the alien. Mm -hmm. They leave my mum alone. And it's just the expression on his face, you know, a small child. Yeah. They're, they're so powerful because they've got this toy gun. Um, and they're trying to protect their mother and the alien's expression because this thing is nothing to him. It's all just right, right there. Right there. I love that. love that panel. It's obvious that, that you guys have enjoyed every moment. Well, probably every moment <laughs> um, <laughs> of this process. Um, I, I just, uh, is there any other... Well, I don't know how to ask this. Um, <laughs> what are you looking forward to doing in book two that you didn't get to do in book one? Good question. Or is that too in the in the squiggle universe unknown yet to really identify yet? 
Well, I want to find out what happens because I haven't read the script. I want to find out too. Well, yeah, we all want that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we get the boys' script. <laughs> I've got the script. I haven't read it. But oh, it, yeah. Hey, that's it's on just you. That's on you. Thing. That's never on you. <laughs> the way book one is set up is so beautifully done. It's um, yeah. It's yeah. It's very intriguing. Now I know from speaking to Ian that so again with the detail of his artwork, so the way I said that when you go into a crowd scene you can see an expression, you know, there, there's there's universes within each panel, as it were. Uh it's the same with his writing. If we start talking about one character, there's a whole rich tapestry of their existence behind it, and it comes out when you talk to Ian. So Knowing that and having those conversations, you know, if we talk about one character, you'll find out, you know, you he could probably tell you who their their great uncle was and what they did in the war. Oh. Or, you know, it's 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 that level of detail through scripting as well. That it's like when the original Star Wars came out and you knew there was so much backstory. Like when Empire Strikes Back came out, you knew Boba Fett had a whole. There was a guy who had a universe behind him. Yeah. Yeah. And and um. Of course, sometimes they spoil those things by going and filling in the backstory in, in different ways than you'd imagined. Um, we're, we're talking, we're talking the prequels, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Didn't this, this is a, this is <laughs> that's right. So this is a story that it just yeah, like you said, it it absolutely it's got the aroma of backstory just wafting off off it yeah. in every direction. Yeah. So rather than being particularly uh, focused on book two. I just want to know as much of that backstory about all these characters. You know, there's been so much there. I want it to come out. You know, so let's hope it can all come out. Yep. All right. We're we're down to final questions. Ben. Hmm. Well, um, Brendan, what are you going to do with all your spare time? (laughs) Oh, I'm going to... Yeah, well, actually, I'm I'm working on a I'm working on a piece of music, and I'm really excited about it. Oh. I've um, it, it's it's I've got the this is this is interesting. <clears throat> Sickness is sometimes a gift. I've had these awful throbbing headaches for years, twenty four seven, and the doctor has finally said, "Tell you what, let's try and get rid of them." Oh, finally, shove, finally, <laughs> yeah, after many years, and um, and she actually wrote me a note and said, "Here." have some time off work on the on the government's coin and um i've I've carried on working but it's made things financially easier uh which means i've been able to work on this during work time without having to worry about it Mm -hmm. and uh and it also means i've now got the time to think about luxuries like music and so i'm going to record a song it's a prog 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 metal Yes, that will cure your headache just like that. <laughs> it's amazing what you can do with a headache when you get used to one. Yeah, you get used to functioning through pain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that sounds perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Steve, same question. If you remember what the question was. Yeah, now that you have all this time, what are you doing? It's going to be what we're doing after this book. So when this book goes to bed, um, I'm, I'm, I've got four scripts to write, and people, artists, bugging me for them. I've got uh, the annual to catch up on because that should be out by the end of the year. Uh, I've got a two. I'm working on a cover with one and only Simon Busy for us. Um, and potentially a six page shoot with him. So there's quite a lot oh. on the horizon at the moment. Uh, I'm quite excited, but I'm wondering where I'm going to squeeze the time in. And you have to book that mm. ticket, that train ticket for me to pick you up a couple of weeks on Friday. You need to get that ticket booked. Yeah. Don't forget. I'm booked, I'm booked off of work. So the day job is, is booked out. Yeah. Um, I've taken time off the fitness business. I've also taken time off managing my daughter's football team and, uh, yeah, all the other stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Vicky, last question. 
Uh, let's see. Well, I thought I already asked my last question. Oh, I'm giving you. Um, a, I'm giving you a last. <laughs> oh, you're question. gonna give me a last, last, last. Yeah, oh, last, cool. last, last, last. question. <laughs> okay. Sum up in three words or less what this experience has meant to you, Steve. You first. Oh, I was first on the first question. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're first on this question. But you're too. first on the last one, darling. Steve, Steve, you've got something that sh makes us think. First question about your face. I don't know. Three what words or less. Three, oh, okay. Three <laughs> words or less. Um, can, I, can I have four? Uh, words? Four. four okay, words. Can I have four? You can have four words. I'm going for 14 year old me. Proud. Yes. Wow. Okay, Dad. Nice. Yeah. And as sad as it sounds, as sad as it sounds. Sorry. That's why we've ended up as with six pages because they can't count. <laughs> yeah. As sad as it sounds, um, validation. Um, we're an interesting generation. Um, we before our twenties, we we had ideas of what we wanted to do to become famous. Some of us. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. Most of us. And now some of us are in our 50s. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Got so, to hint it. Uh, and so actually, actually dealing with um, one of my childhood heroes uh, is, yeah, it makes me feel good. <clears throat> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Ben, I should ask you too. You've been in this process. Give me four words or less how you felt through this. A pleasure to be involved. Pleasure to and be I've been looking That's in. four. I've been looking you got in. it. That's four. <laughs> That's four. You got it. Yeah. He had more time. It certainly has been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the I've house. edited it. Yeah. 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 Let's get our housekeeping out of the way. Ben, The 77, go ahead. Okay. So on Facebook, you can find us at The 77 Comic. Uh, we've got the publications page as well, business side, the 77comic.net, the shop. We're on WordPress. We're all over the place. We're yeah. on X. We're on Insta. I don't know other platforms we're on, but uh, YouTube. So we'd love you to subscribe. Yes. Definitely, guys, the hit the subscribe button. I'm showing it again. The subscribe button and also hit not the notification bell so that you're notified when a new episode of Marcus 77 comes out. Uh, let me do my bit of housekeeping. Uh, Vicky and I are um, part of Marku 42's universe. Uh, yeah, Marku again. Uh, I just take it all, all the credit here. Uh, I started yeah. it back in 2012. We are aired uh, many times during the week on Subspace Radio Network, which is www.subspace.radio. We also have an extended version of our podcast called the Marku 42's Universe Podcast. See, I make it easy. Marku 42, just do it. And, and I think we are changing it to Mark Grade uh, 77 next time. I think we're going to go Mark Grade 42 and Mark Grade 77. So thank you guys for giving me that. Fine, uh, Steve, tell uh, anything you want to let the people know. Any any final thought, thoughts? Um, Ian appreciates every single one of you that purchase and appreciate everything that he does. Um, I'm sure you'd like me to say that. So that is it for me. And I'll pass on any notes that come my way to Ian as we do through the Facebook page. All right. Brendan? No, sorry, I've blinked. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, a thousand miles away. Yeah. Any last final <laughs> thoughts besides that you blanked? <laughs> <laughs> Be excellent to one another, dudes. <laughs> yes rufus all right um there we go. i was on hoping the... for the young keanu but... <laughs> <laughs> showing my age <laughs> on, be on behalf of myself vicky jakabowski and ben cullis the editor-in-chief of the 77 publications and our guest steve bull and bren dune thank you for watching this Mark Who 77 special event, the Ian Gibson's Lifeboat special. Until next time, we'll have another Mark Who 77 for you real shortly. Bye, everyone. Thank you very much.
Thank you.